Well, we're in the shop. There it is right there. And that one. I am getting the two new tires on the trailer. One last bad one that I've had from this last summer. And then the spare, of course. But in the meantime, while we're waiting here at the truck and trailers, figured I'd go ahead and walk around and just show you a little bit of these trailers that they have. I know a lot of you are upgrading to new trailers and getting ready for the 2020 season. So one of the biggest things that I don't think a lot of people realize is when you are shopping for a trailer, this is a nice little dual axle, Unless you are absolutely just pulling one mower and maybe a couple of push mowers, single axle trailer is perfectly fine. It's all you need. But let me tell you something right now. If you are considering pulling two mowers or more, a single axle trailer is dangerous and it will not cut it. One, of course, the size. And two, you that's just overkill man that weight is not evening out it's not balancing out you really need a dual axle trailer so ninjas if you are considering getting two mowers or hauling two mowers coming up in this next season you really need to start looking into a dual axle trailer for safety reasons and also just for maintenance and repairs if you put two mowers plus everything else, you have to keep in mind the trailer weight of its own, right? The trailer itself on one axle, two mowers, and then all the freaking blowers and racks and trimmers and whatever else you may have, all the tools. That's a lot of weight on a single axle, 3,500 pound axle. It's not gonna cut it. You really need to go into the dual axle. And uh, another quick tip. If you are shopping for a new trailer, go ahead and pay a little extra and upgrade to the 5,200 pound axles instead of the 3,500 pound axles. You're gonna thank me later, ninjas, and it's all right, it's all right. I don't need all the credit. I just wanna give you a tip <laughs> because <clears throat> I've learned in the past with the old trailer that I had, some of you may know who've been watching me for a while, I had problems with those axles and I've actually bent both of them. I ended up replacing them and then I ended up selling the trailer. Of course, I was I was ready for an upgrade anyway. These are some enclosed right here, Spartan trailers. 5,200 pound axles is the way to go instead of the 3,500. Again, it's only if you are planning on pulling two or more mowers. If you're planning on putting some weight on that trailer, keep in mind the trailer weight itself, plus all the other stuff, it all adds up. And it doesn't matter if you're looking at a utility trailer or an enclosed trailer, for that matter. It doesn't matter. 5,200 pound axles. It's one of the reasons my utility trailer uh, costs a little more than what normally it would have or the old one that I, when I bought it brand new because it, uh, it, 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 you know, it's a little extra, but I'm telling you, it, it will save you head, a headache down the road <clears throat> in maintenance wise. And um, you're not gonna bend those axles, man. Here's, a, here's one that's very similar to mine. It's a big Tex. It's definitely a used trailer, but <laughs> See, I can already tell just looking at it, these are two 3,500 pound axles. You want the 5,200 pound axles. I've had a couple of ninjas actually message me and ask me what I would recommend. One just recently, and I've had several throughout the last couple of months, and I've answered their questions, but it's uh, now that I'm here and I'm just kind of hanging out and waiting on my trailer and tires to be replaced. Um, it reminded me, I was like, oh, that's a good topic to bring up. So. Today's whole video, Ninjas, is going to be about protecting yourself. We're going to talk about another thing uh, once I get going out of here. But it's all about protecting yourself and your business. And this is a good reason or a good example of also protecting yourself and your equipment. Making sure um, you are in the weight ratio properly. And also just do not put overkill on one axle 
uh, all that weight. <clears throat> so it's gonna save you on maintenance and money down the road, right? Also ninjas, a dual axle trailer, in my opinion, is just the way to go. You get a blowout, you can keep going. You've got three other wheels turning that can get you to the nearest gas station or the nearest shop, for example, or even maybe home. But if you have a single axle trailer, you get a blowout, you're in big trouble. Um, especially if you don't have a spare, always make sure you have a spare, first of all. That is like a duh, right? If you don't have a spare and you're going on a single axle trailer, you are just, you're just asking for it. <clears throat> it's not good, not good. Let's take a look at this. This one actually opens doors to the side. Small little trailer. This is definitely not a lawn care trailer, but I do like these new trailers now that they're coming with um, factory LED lights right here. It is very nice. I've noticed that on several others. I think that is something that all manufacturers either are slowly transitioning to or maybe just certain brands, but that is pretty cool. It's, uh, it's a safety thing, guys. LEDs are always gonna be brighter. They're longer lasting and uh, I like them that they're up here actually that is pretty cool so anyway just a quick tip 5200 pound axles is my recommendation why not you're not if you're already spending that kind of money and you're getting a brand new trailer just add a little extra and get the 5200 pound axles you're gonna thank me later you're gonna thank yourself later and uh, you'll save money down the road in the long haul because the 5200 pound axles are just designed to uh, withstand so much more beating and longer lasting the longevity of life expectancy on uh, 5200 pound axles is amazing and much longer compares to 23500 pounds now look if you're just pulling one tr uh, mower and that's all you plan on sticking with one axle is fine just make sure you have a spare um, and if you are getting ready to upgrade to the 30 uh, to a dual axle you really need to know what you what you're doing and, and, and what you're going to use it for. Two 3,500 pound axles are fine too, but in my opinion, it's just a little bit extra to upgrade it to that 5,200 pounds. And uh, it's going to come so much handy later on. All right, anyway, just thought I'd share that. We're also going to, it's all about protecting your business, right? It's all about protecting yourself, protecting your business. And uh, let me get out of here. It's overcast, it's been overcast all freaking day uh, because we got rain on the way. <clears throat> We've got rain on the way like crazy. And I think I'm not working tomorrow because it's gonna be raining all freaking night and all day tomorrow. Uh, also, a couple of other questions real quick that I just remembered. <clears throat> Tubed trailer or square box? Does it make a difference? No, it's really more of a preference. Uh, I like the square box because as you ninjas know, we all like to use um, blower and trimmer racks and they just, they, uh, it's so much easier to install them on a box frame than a tube frame. But you can go tube frame too. Um, it's just a little bit harder to install the uh, racks. But anyway, all right, let's get out of here. Well, there you go. New spare, new tires on this side. And new tires on this side. Shouldn't have to worry about it anymore for a while.
All right, ninjas, I am home. Well, I've actually been home now for a while, but I got caught up on the phone, and I've been on the phone for like two freaking hours just chatting away. But I wanted to, wanted to conclude this video and also think about having, okay? How, it's pretty important to protect yourself. So this whole video is about protecting your business and protecting yourself. And so we've already talked about the trailer situation just for maintenance and things like that and protecting your investment and, and, and even your mowers and things. So just beefing up the trailer. But another one, and I know we've talked about it and many people talk about it, is insurance. Make sure you have insurance on your business. You have to protect your business. You have to protect yourself as well. People can come after you and after your business in uh, case of an accident that you damage somebody's property or uh, whether it be a home or a car or hit somebody in the eye or in the face, you sling something out of your mower. So you really wanna make sure you have some liability coverage. Um, you can get it pretty cheap, up to a million or $2 million. It's just a couple hundred bucks a year. I know if it's something that it, somebody who may be just starting out, <clears throat> your insurance is most likely gonna be a little bit higher, just because you know you're new and uh, they don't know uh, how you're gonna be and whatnot. So your price might be a little bit higher than that, but overall, it's worth it. You should get it. But what a lot of people don't think about also protecting yourself is a lot of us ninjas are just using our regular trucks. Um, for our business, and of course, right? But Nick, but Nick, I gotta use the truck. Of course you do, you gotta pull the trailer, but make sure you've actually got your truck covered on a business policy with your insurance company. Just make sure you're they're aware that you are using that truck for business purposes, because if you do not, and they're not aware of that, and they think you're just using your truck for a regular, you know, driving around from uh, grocery store, job, traveling, whatever, right? It's not a commercial vehicle. And you get into an accident or something happens or somebody hits you and they find out that it's a commercial vehicle or being used as a commercial vehicle and it's, you know, not covered as a commercial vehicle, they may decline you if you really need to have a uh, coverage, you know, or you need to make a, um, a report or you have an accident or something like that. So you really got to make sure you protect yourself right there also another one workman's comp not a lot of us talk about it and i don't know anybody who's talked about it at least um and i want to say probably because not maybe many of us carry it and maybe we do but we just don't want to talk about it make sure you have workman's comp if you've got people working for you but Nick but Nick, uh, I, I don't have actual employees, but Nick, uh, I just have uh, uh, subcontractors, you know, but, 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 I just I give them a 1099, ah, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. See, if they're working for you, they're on your time, they are still considered an employee of some sort, whether it's a subcontractor or an actual, te you know, uh, a W-2 employee, doesn't matter what you want to do is protect yourself and your business because if somebody's working for you ninjas and they hurt themselves <laughs> you don't know where that can go let's say they do hurt themselves it's not severe but enough that you know you send them home or they got to go home and they go home and then they end up deciding to talk to a couple of their family members relatives friends and those friends suggest and say you're working for a company uh, you really need to go check yourself out. Then they go check themselves out and they find out they have something pretty serious, right? Maybe a surgery. And all of a sudden, think, 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 think. Hospital's like, was this at a job or at home? And they're going to say, no, this happened at work. Who do you work for? And they may not even push to come after you for the damages but the hospital might. The hospital will do it. And so, because the hospital is also trying to make money, they're also trying to take care of this individual. So they're gonna look ways of trying to find this out, who's gonna pay and how they can get paid. Make sure you have workman's comp. Whether you have 1099 employees, or uh, whether you have 1099 subcontractors, or you actually have W-2 employees, make sure you have workman's comp. It's not expensive. Don't get it on yourself. 
because that's gonna really bring up the price up. You can actually get it on yourself, but that's like crazy expensive. But make sure you get it on people who work for you. As long as they're working for you, they're on your time, make sure they're covered. You have different packages. You have different packages that you can buy with a workman's comp package. And keep in mind, when you get workman's comp coverage, they will audit you. They will audit you if not every year, every other year. They will audit you. And all it is, the audit is, is they wanna see how much you actually paid this individual for the end of the year. And the reason they wanna do that, Ninjas, is that that's how um, you get into a certain coverage, certain package, so to say. And so like, for example, 25,000 or under, if you, as long as you stay under 25,000 a year for that per individual or under, you're good. Or you can get the next one, I think is like 35 or 40, whatever, you get the point. So they will audit you, make sure you get it, protect yourself, protect your business, protect your equipment, just protect yourself, protect yourself. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed. I hope it helps you protect yourself. I mean it. And we'll see you at the next one. Peace.